and welcome to my channel. Hey, that's Juanita. Today I'm going to talk about my hydrangea because my hydrangea looks horrible. I mean, I thought the whole thing was dead, but I mean, this looks good compared to what it looked like just a couple of days ago. Part of this is also because it's just that time of the year where the hydrangea is going to be going dormant. But there's so many things that can go wrong. This will happen if it's diseased, but it wasn't from going dormant. <music> Um, a broom strap it will grow from new wood as well as the old wood and I'll show you in case you don't know the difference I'll show you really close as to what I'm talking about uh, but anyway I examined it and I saw a ton of new growth coming out and I'll bring you really close so you can look at the whole thing and what I'm talking about as I move these around uh, all this is fresh new growth here. So that tells me this plant is well alive even down here. In fact, it even looks green. Now, there's a, let's see how well I am even pointing you into this direction. Let me, I'm gonna put you a little bit further down. But if, if you look at this, there's some buds here. This is all new growth. There's some buds right here on both sides. All this new green foliage that you see, all that is just really, really new. Looking at the leaves, there's no evidence of disease on that. But any uh, on the new ones, there's nothing. Of course, you can't tell on, the, on this one. I thought maybe it might have root rot, so I started digging around. But as you can see, all these, they're all very healthy. See how green they are? They're extremely healthy. So there's no root rot here going on. That's how you can tell if there's root rot. Because they're not black. They're all really healthy and green. So, in fact, there's some, some new growth coming in. So, but yeah, it actually needs watering. We're expecting to get rain tonight. So uh, I probably will lightly water this, relieve it of all its dead leaves, dig it out, um, and give it some new ground to uh, make its uh, winter bed for it and see where it takes me. Okay, so let's get this dug out and at least plant it a little bit further down. no black if it had root rot it'd be black there's nothing to indicate there's root rot in here all the all of it looks really really healthy now I am getting some of those clumps out just so that it can breathe a little bit before I put it back in the ground but see there's even new growth going out right here so this is all new wood coming out be new wood over here. This right here is old wood. Okay, so I'm gonna put that one aside. So now I'm just gonna dig this a little bit wider, put it back in with some good uh, fish fertilizer. Uh, fish fertilizer is really good for uh, reestablishing those roots into the ground. It also repairs and gives it nitrogen. So fish fertilizer is really good for uh, establishing your plants. Okay. 
Now, woo! <laughs> and you know when your soil is good when you come up with a good uh, night crawler. Now one way to know if you got good drainage, or see how it's bubbling and it's lowering, that's when you know you have good drain soil. I'm going to add a little bit more water here, wet this really well. Get this baby back in the ground. Child, I know you hurt and you can't let go. It's not your fault, and you don't deserve all the bad in the hurt. But now it's just a matter of taking off all these dead limbs off of here. Uh, when you're removing dead leaves, always make sure you pick up after them. Because you just never know if you if there's disease or a, a fungus or something, and you don't want your plant anywhere near that. So you always want to clean up around it and dispose of it. Not in your composting, not even in the city composting, but rather your garbage. Because you just never know you don't want to contaminate anything. Uh, that other people may be getting. So, yeah. So now I'll bring you really close again, just so that you can see what it looks like. So now you can probably see this a lot better. These leaves again, they're just wilted because they need hydration. Uh, there's nothing wrong with them. This one got scorched by the sun. Uh, not going to worry about that. I could clip this down a little bit, but I'm going to wait till next spring because I really don't want to create any more damage. But, but see how there's some new buds here, some new foliage coming out here. On, on this one, there's some over right here. Let's see if this one's, yep, yeah, this one, here's a new bud coming out right here. Uh, there's some right here that are coming out. So this is really actually healthy. There's a bud right here. So there's no reason to cut any of it back at this point. So now I'll just give it a really good water right below. To be honest with you, this was not the plan for me to do this today. I came out here and I went into panic mode. <laughs> and so that's what I'm trying to resolve and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna go shopping because my whole intentions today was actually to go shopping at a nursery for more succulents because I am redoing the live roof of my chicken coop. So stay tuned for that video. It will be posting it probably in the later part of October. So don't go away because I will come back. So it's been a couple hours that I was gone since I did all this and planted it and did the first part of this video. And look, all the leaves are starting to open up and be healthy. Even the ones that were curled up are coming alive. Uh, this one still is very pliable. If not, I'll cut that off, but it's showing a lot of promise. We're gonna be expecting a really downpour, which I am so glad because we are so in desperate need of rain here. But uh, this is gonna get 
hopefully not destroy, uh, but it will get a good drink of water and that's what's important. So I hope some of this information that I was able to give you today was of some help. If you have hydrangeas and all of a sudden they're just kind of like <laughs> doing this weird stuff, you'll at least be able to have something to go by and look at and assess it to see if it's actually dead, dying, or root rot or what's going on with it. Uh, I'm not going to finish this video quite yet. I'm going to wait until after the weekend till it quits raining and see how this is doing and then report back to you guys. Okay, so I'm back. I wanted to wait not only because it was going to be raining, but also so that all the leaves could uh, open up, all the ones that were really crinkled up. I wanted them to open up so that I could take a better look at what was going on with this. Uh, because let me tell you, when I first saw this plant, it looked 10 times worse than it did at the beginning of this video. But here is what I think happened. Now Portland gets a lot of rain. However, when it rains here, typically the temperatures drop before it rains, allowing the plants to also drop their temperature core to accept all the rain that falls on them. So it's not about water consuming the tops of plants. The problem is, is that we were getting this high record temperatures of 112, 115 degrees. So this uh, broom struck macrophilia was getting really stressed out from not only temperatures that we're not accustomed to, but it was scorching the leaves getting water poured on top of it and not only just water but cold water because we were uh, watering our lawn and we have one of those sprinkler system that fans in and out so it's getting this uh, hot and cold temperature constantly on this plant getting tons of water poured on top of it and drenching it and not really getting any uh, moisture in the bottom so what's in a nutshell, what's going on with this is that it is dealing with a bacterial fungal disease. I was dealing with a similar situation with my rose bush, and now it is doing beautifully. I didn't record that, I, I, and I quit watering overhead, or at least I told my husband, don't water overhead with the sprinkler. Uh, make sure that it's not hitting the plants above, but unfortunately, this was being drenched on. So be careful when you water, to not water when it's really hot out. Wait till the temperatures drop a little bit. You don't really want to do it late at night, but you don't want to do it in the middle of the day unless you're watering below because you will save your plants from a lot of uh, fungus and diseases. So let me bring you up and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so do you see this leaf right here? See how black it is? And see this little black spots right here? That's the fungus here. Now, this leaf is pretty dry, but nevertheless, it's diseased and I need to get rid of it. This one right over here, same thing. It's getting some little spots right here and that's what the fungus is. This one's being affected. Several of them are being affected. Uh, even this little blackness here is starting consuming that leaf as well. See this uh, kind of coppery stuff going on right here? So now it's also fighting something else. Now, you want to take care of this situation as soon as possible because if you don't, that fungus will consume the whole leaf, the whole plant, and eventually kill it. So if I have to remove every leaf and trim it back to save this plant, that's what I'm gonna have to do. Uh, but I will determine that as I look at this a lot closer, but looking at it, um, it's, it's gonna be 
pretty stripped down. So the one way to take care of it is using a copper base um, bactericide solution. You could use a 10% bleach solution and take care of that. Now I will film it. However, I'm not gonna take you through this. If you wanna see that process, I will post it. Otherwise, it's just for my own information. Now, typically you don't want to trim back hydrangeas uh, until early spring because basically it um, disturbs the blooming cycle. But because I am dealing with this situation, I don't care about the blooming cycle at this point. All I care about is saving this plant. The reason why I dug it out was because if it had some root rot, I could take care of that issue. So with that being said, if you're gonna dig your plant out, make sure it's before frost, first and foremost. Second, dig safely around the whole perimeter of your plant, same way that you would put uh, fertilizer on them. If so if you take away anything out of this video, um, at least you'll know that if your hydrangea is doing something kind of like really weird, you'll be able to come here, look at the limbs, look at, uh, if you have to dig it out, dig it out, just make sure it's before frost. Look for uh, root rot if that's the case. Typically, if you're dealing with root rot, uh, the, the ground is pretty saturated. Uh, so that's one way that you can tell if you're dealing with root rot amongst the fact that you can pull it out and see if your roots are black. This had none of that going on. And most of it is very healthy still. So I just need to get rid of what's not healthy and, uh, and, and really spray this down and treat it as fast as I can. Let's see, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below because I love to hear your comments. I like reading them. If you have any advice, that would be helpful because I may know a lot, but I don't know everything. Um, I'm still learning. I learn every day, um, you know, because sometimes you just don't know what's going on. Now, this appears to be a mild case. However, if I don't take care of it right away, it will consume it and become a bigger problem. Not only to this plant, but my surrounding plants, like I mentioned. So, if you like this, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification button so you catch me on all my videos, especially because I will be doing my live roof on my chicken coop uh, next. <laughs> that is, That was my intentions um, because certainly this was no intent. I had absolutely no intentions of filming. I just caught this from the side of my eye while I was on my way to go shopping and uh, ended up doing this emergency 911 to the rescue of this hydrangea and and here we are so yeah stay tuned for that you won't want to miss it it's going to be something new and creative this year so it desperately needs it my chickens need to be insulated for the winter so it's a must do on my list on the top of my list so Thank you so much for joining me. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for joining me as well. Please hit that notification button so you catch me on all my videos. This is one way that you can support my channel is by sharing, subscribing, and hitting that bell notification so you catch me on all my videos. Okay, love you. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys on my next one. Bye-bye for now.